Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legospi. Today we are going to continue the composition lesson series. And today's topic, today's book will be the famous artist's course. And this book arguably is one of the most important art instruction books, libraries, volumes. There's many books. There's over 20 books, 20 volumes ever to have been written and written by some of the most important artists in history, especially in American illustration history. Some giants, we'll, we'll talk about some of the authors, uh, multiple authors created this book, this school, the famous artist. This book is a course that came from an actual school, famous artist school. It's just a wonderful, wonderful book, very little known. So if you haven't heard of it, comment below if you have heard of this book or maybe you have never heard of it. This is the first time hearing of it. It's little known, quite obscure. It's very rare, a rare book. Physical copies are very difficult to get, but it is just incredible. So we're gonna take a look at one tiny volume in the book concerning composition and figures. And before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free Insiders Club. Insiders Club members get first access to these weekly live streams. And you also get access to other live events. And you get discounts on courses and programs, along with access to free lessons and other free content available only to subscribers. So all you have to do is go to www drawwithchris.com and there you can enter your email and you'll be good to go. So we're going to begin today's composition lessons by first doing a brief overview of the book. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. We'll quickly look at some of the history behind this particular book, this series of books actually, and the famous artist school. Then we'll go into some of the top four lessons that I got from this particular volume. We're only going to look at actually volume eight, book number eight, which is about comp composing the figure particularly, which is very interesting. And then we're going to do a draw along and demonstrations, of course. So you can uh, draw along with me and practice what we uh, just discussed from the book. And before we begin, comment below, where are you located? Where are you watching from? What time is it for you? I am currently in Thailand and it's uh, 11 in the morning for me, Saturday morning. So thank you for being here wherever you are and welcome. If you're just joining me for the first time or if you're uh, joining me um, from a new location, our times have changed uh, today. So there may be some new folks here watching for the first time. So I appreciate you. Thank you for joining me live, those of you watching live or on replay. Now, famous artist course, wow. You know, I've known of this book or these volumes of books, this course, this famous artist school for many years. And um, this is the first time I've actually sat down to actually review these series of books. I was able to get my hands on them. And wow, I am just absolutely blown away. I really want to explore this book and talk more about it. So that will be coming in the future. But let's look at this particular volume we're going to study is actually volume eight. And like I said, Famous Artist Course actually has 24 different books in it. We're going to look today at volume number eight, which is figure composition. And um, this series of books, this series of lessons was originally published in 1960 by various authors, among them the great American illustrator Norman Rockwell. Also among them uh, many, many great American illustrators. One of the important co-authors is Albert Dorn, American illustrator, Ben Stoll among them, Peter Helk, Robert Fawcett, Austin Briggs. So some of these names, you know, I, I am not familiar with. They're a bit before my generation. And now that I uh, have taken a look at these books, I definitely want to learn more about these gentlemen, very important gentlemen. So here's just a quote from one of the chapters in the book. For the artist, this thinking through of the composition is one of the most important parts of picture making. True, he will still have to make the picture, but it will be that much better because of the careful planning he did at the start. Wow. So, um, you know, in this series, we talked many times, we've shared some quotes and ideas from authors and talked about how important it is 
how composition is very little understood, very little appreciated. But really, if you don't start with composition, you're going to either struggle or not have the best picture possible. And, and again, so this is echoed by great authors like Norman Rockwell, arguably one of the greatest illustrators to have ever lived. So he is echoing the sentiment, and I made sure to underline it here. It will be that much better. The picture will be that much better because of the careful planning the artist does at the start. So composition is the beginning of a great picture, you know, as we have seen from the previous authors that we looked at. And again, it's we're reminded of it again here by the, the great authors of the famous artist course. And um, here's just some beautiful image from the book, a page from the book, and it mentions directing your pictures. You could see just how, you know, the, here's, a, here's a look at the finished illustration in the middle, but you can see all of the elements are not accidental. They're all carefully thought of characters, obviously, the fabric the lines in the background, the choice of background elements, the camera placement, the placement of the figures relative to each other, the light and dark masses. So everything we have talked about here is all part of the composition. It's all part of the careful planning. So that is just, again, a reminder how, like I always say, what I share is the best information in the world. And I can say that because none of it is mine. All of this uh, great knowledge has been handed down by the greats that came before us. So, you know, and, and it's all there available for us to learn and to model. So careful planning really is the beginning of great pictures, again, echoed by the famous artist course. And here's a look at some of the great artists who co-founded the famous artist school, which was a real school. And this book, Famous Artist Course, was actually a correspondence course, which means by mail. So of course, this school and this book was founded in the 1950s, I believe. Let's take a look here. The Famous Artist School was originally founded in 1948 here, according to Wikipedia, by prominently uh, the New York Society of Illustrators, principally Albert Dorn and Norman Rockwell. So these two men here. So uh, this was well before the internet, <laughs> well before, um, you know, things like New Masters Academy and Noman, you know, and YouTube. So if you wanted to learn things, you had to go to a school. And these men were wanted to teach their knowledge to the world. And the way they could do that to the most people at the time was by mail or correspondence. So we are just so blessed to have these volumes. And we're going to Take a look at one particular volume today. Okay, lesson number one, thinking sketch. So again, we're going to focus on volume eight of the Famous Artist course. Volume eight deals specifically with figure composition. And uh, the first lesson, now there's so, you know, so many wonderful takeaways. All of the volumes are expertly written and arranged, you know, lots and lots and lots of beautiful pictures and diagrams. Of course, any great art book is going to be mostly pictures. That's how artists think. So the famous artist course is no exception, full of wonderful, wonderful diagrams, very easy to read and digest and understand. So volume eight, composing with figures. And one of the biggest takeaways I got was the thinking sketch. Now, what does that mean? The thinking sketch, and you could see it here, and uh, I will read the quote from the book, is, you, you the artist, should make a number of preliminary sketches and then select the best of these to finish. Each one should be a thinking sketch. It should represent some new view or arrangement that you first visualize in the mind's eye. Don't make a lot of thoughtless sketches in the hope that one one out of many might be the right one. There should be real thought behind each. And that's what I mean by thinking sketch. And that, when I read that, I was like, wow, I have been saying that for years. <laughs> I've been saying that for years. Do not take the composition sketch lightly. Do not just randomly make composition sketches. As the author says here, don't make a lot of thoughtless sketches and hope that one might might be right, right? Don't don't just sketch and think, oh, maybe I'll get lucky. Or even worse, and this is what I've seen in my in my years and years and years of teaching art, is that 
most of the time students just kind of you know when you're new to picture making you just kind of make a picture and you go oh, well, uh you know and then and then hope and pray the composition will be right no <laughs> no 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 that's not how it works you start in the thumbnail of course and each thumbnail there should be real thought behind each quote this is a direct quote from the author there should be real thought behind each behind each thumbnail you should really really think 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 plan it out and iterate of course we'll talk about that every detail and here here's uh, the actual page from the book and you could see how for example this image here on the upper left right that's a nice composition but the author's like well can i make it better what can i can i iterate and make it better same in the middle right this this composition here middle left is pretty nice but the author was like hmm can i make it better can i make it more dynamic can i make more of an emotional impact so that is the big part of the process is to put careful thought into your thumbnails lesson number two mood symbols so this is uh, again relates specifically to volume eight figure composition mood symbols is what the author calls um is creating expressive abstract little symbols with the pose of the figure so here in the upper left here here um the author has um created uh this little sketch of these like expressive abstract little symbols that that communicate emotion right you have up here you have this like oh you know like uh kind of an explosion like a wow here you have you know sort of this like candy cane looking thing you know a bit curvy and down here you have lots of straights action speed lines here you have a, an explosion but it's more a zigzag a bit more aggressive and here you have the calming waves right so these um and and various sketches and examples the author shows how the figure communicates these poses and communicates the emotion so when i saw this i was like oh you know i've been saying this for years i've been practicing this for years now i know it's been reinforced by by the great authors behind the famous artist school so wow this is definitely something that we want to use in our work you know we want to be conscious of the figures and as you know th those of you who are watching and maybe um, are already advanced in figures or maybe you've been drawing figures for a while you already know this you already know how important it is to choose the right pose and those of you who may be new to drawing or new to picture making and maybe figures aren't quite your strength yet this is just a reminder that if when you're ready to start composing with figures you know perhaps you're watching this and you're more of a landscape artist or you're more of a still life artist which is also requires compositional skill as we have learned in previous videos it's important as well very important for those subjects the figure obviously in itself as a shape you know as shapes of its contour shape and also its shapes of value and things like that of course we have to consider pictorially composition in the composition but here the mood the pose itself tells a story so that is something that we want to be aware of and these great authors reminded us here the importance of what they call mood symbols or using the figure's pose to express a mood or emotion. Lesson number three, the picture's border and placement. When I saw this, I was instantly reminded of Molly Bang. Comment below if you remember the lesson. All the way back in video number one, we talked about Picture This, the book Picture This by Molly Bang and one of her chapters. One of her sections one of her lessons is the importance of placing placement and particularly against the border when you place a compositional element in this case a character or a figure if it's close to the border it affects the picture dramatically so here the author talks about specifically action let's read the quote from the book depending on where you place the figure in relation to the border its action may be clear or confused. If, for example, you place a figure too close to a border, it may join with the border, attracting the viewer's attention to the frame rather than 
to the figure. And this is especially true when the figure touches the border. So depending on where you place the figure, the action or the figure or, or what the story you want to convey may be more clear or may be confused. So again, clarity, 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 and careful decision making. So let's take a look at this example at the bottom here real quick. So here, this diagrams here beautifully illustrate this idea. So here, the topic of your picture is a figure running, a figure in motion, right? Now, if you put it in the middle, it's, it's nice. The, the pose tells the story, but can we make it better? Can we make it better? What if we move the, the figure to the left that's touching the frame? You see how it slows down. Do you see how the feeling changes? Like here, the figure's moving. Now the figure feels like it's being pulled away from you. It's like slowing down because the picture is making contact with the border on the left and Western society, West, you know, English speakers, not, not just English, but English and Latin derived cultures, we read left to right, right? We read left to right. So left for us also is a symbol of time. So we, we, we read left to right for us in a picture. Also time reads left to right. That left is the beginning, right is the conclusion, the end, right? We read left to right. Time is left to right for Western people, Western cultures, Western societies. So we can see that because it's on the left, it's slowed down. Now we move it to the right. You see how it's heightened because we read the right side of the picture of the border. Time-wise, we read as progression in time. Time is moving forward. So wow, you can see how compare the left Let's say this is version one, version two, obviously. Now compare version one centered to version three, right? Which one feels like there's more motion? Of course, it's version three. Why? Because it's closer to the right side of the frame, but not quite touching. Look what happens when it actually touches the frame. Now it's it's confusing a little bit because we lose some information, but now the the story has is totally left a canvas. It's basically gone. The character is basically gone. It's left a canvas. So it's almost, you know, it's almost too, too far now. We've lost motion now. So if we want to tell the story of a figure in motion, in this particular case, the figure itself tells the story, but also placing it in this case, closer to the right side of the canvas, the right side of our frame, the right border, heightens the effect, adds to the, the story of movement. So placement is so important. And again, uh, Molly Bang reminded us of this, and now the great authors of the famous artist course, again, reminded us of how important placement is in the frame. And our final lesson, sharpening the picture. And again, when I read this, I was like, oh my God, this is an amazing thing. I got to talk about this because this is something I've been saying for years. And let's just read directly from the book. I'll read it here. And the author says, a composition may be well-balanced, pleasant, and interesting, yet the picture may fall short of being effective. Usually this is a sign that the artist has not given enough thought to sharpening up the picture idea, to how he can get the idea across faster, more clearly, or with greater impact. Wow, 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 wow. What the author is saying is, yeah, your, your first composition or your second, maybe you, you, have, you have done some compositional work and you have a nice picture. It may be working, but it's not as dynamic as it could be, as impactful as it can be, right? It may not be as, and as the author states, it can be more clear and have greater impact. And that's, of course, that's what we want. We always, always, always want to strive for clarity. And in storytelling, we want impact, right? We want the audience to feel something, to connect with our work, of course. So how do we do that? Well, <laughs> what would the author say? The artist has not given enough thought or time. 
And the idea of sharpening the picture really means to keep refining, keep iterating, spend more thought and time. And here the author says, the time you spend in thought, asking and answering questions like these for yourself, and the questions to ask is, how can I change the background to make it better? Can I show more of the background? Can I hide more of the background? Can I change the pose? Can I make something smaller? Can I make something larger? All of these questions are questions to, to ask and to, to iterate, to sketch, to play with, to compose, to make compositional changes. Iterations are little changes you make in, in thumbnails to tweak, compose, and make your picture better. So here the author is reminding you, hey, just because you think you have a decent composition, don't stop. Don't stop there. Keep sharpening your picture. Keep going. Keep pushing it. Keep creating. Keep tweaking. Keep asking questions, right? And again, I've been saying this for years. And again, this is not me. Don't take my word for it. This is co-written by the great Norman Rockwell, arguably one of the greatest artists to have ever lived, says, hey, don't stop at one composition. Keep tweaking keep iterating, keep refining, keep sharpening. If So if it's good enough for the great Norman Rockwell, it is definitely good enough for us. So this is a great lesson. Obviously, if you're new to composing and composition and design and picture making, this is really, really hard. This is really hard. And you may not have enough visual experience, visual library, knowledge and experience to know like, oh, can my figure pose be a little better? Or, oh, can my, can my background be a little darker? Or should the figure's costume be more mid-tone instead of black? You know, those decisions, you may not have enough experience. But how do you get the experience is by, of course, sketching. Like I always say, I've, like I've said in every video so far, composition is a muscle. You want to grow that muscle just like you have to grow muscles in the gym. You have to put in your reps. One way to get your reps is by taking the same picture and doing as many iterations as possible. But for those of you who are new, you can review a lot of the videos in this series where I talk about lots of different things that you can change and play with and iterate. Value, placement of the figure we saw, you know, the pose that we just saw, no tan versus mid-tone, like as, as we just learned in a previous lesson. So there are lots of little simple things you can play with. So even if you're new, I know it's very difficult, but don't be intimidated and don't be afraid to try new things. And even though your compositional muscles may be hurting, this lesson here from great artists like the great Norman Rockwell reminds us to keep pushing, to keep doing the reps. I know when you're doing reps, your muscles get sore, right? But you know, any good teacher or good trainer will tell you, hey, push past the pain to get the results you want. And the results for us are stronger, more impactful compositions. So again, this reminds us to keep trying, to keep refining and to keep sharpening no matter what stage we're at in our composition. Okay, let's do a draw along together. We're going to do some thumbnail sketching from imagination. And this exercise or this draw along is inspired by the book, by volume eight of the Famous Artist Course. And our draw along will be Tension at Home. Tension at home. Tension means like uh, conflict or, you know, like something uncomfortable. It's like a bit of an uncomfortable situation between two people. So the brief is, here's our assignment. Sketch a composition of two characters in a room that communicates conflict or tension in a domestic setting. Domestic setting means your, your house, your backyard, you know, your, your, your home. So it's probably going to be some sort of story between two, you know, two family members, two close friends, something like that. I'm going to leave, you can choose what two characters to draw. I'm probably going to draw a man and a woman. So I'm going to imply a couple and I'm going to, we're going to sketch a room. So the rules and guidelines are, of course, select the best poses to communicate the story. So we're going to think of the story and the emotion first and then keep the background simple and clear. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to suggest the background, so keep it as simple as possible. And then, of course, black and white with limited values. So let's get sketching here. And this page is directly from the book. This is where I got the idea for this draw along. And uh, you can see uh, in this example, 
just how clear these compositions are, right? You can feel emotion already just by the poses, and you can see how simple the the room is. So we're going to try to uh, try to uh, do this exercise for ourselves here. Okay, tension at home. So I'm going to just sketch. First, we're going to play with the poses. So I'm going to do a series of little thumbnails, and I'm just going to play with poses. So we have two characters. Remember, the brief is tension at home. So some kind of conflict, uncomfortable situation between two people in a domestic setting, two people at home. I'm going to sketch a man and a woman. Let's see how good my figure drawing is, how uh, I'm not too rusty or whatever. So you can follow along with me. So if you choose, uh, if you're following along at home, you're watching at home. Again, you don't have to sketch a couple. I'm, I'm gonna. My two characters will be a man and a woman, so a, a couple supposedly. That's gonna be interesting because I have to also communicate male and female. And I'm just going to sketch poses. So right now I'm really just being loose, not too worried about composition. First, I just want to get the poses. Remember the um, the mood, the mood uh, symbols. I'll just quickly sketch them here. Remember these mood symbols from uh, that from the lesson we talked about. Right, uh, we used using the pose to communicate an emotion, of course. So I'm still trying to think of a pose. I have an idea. <laughs> this guy's holding a, <laughs> I tried to draw a bottle of wine <laughs> or something, some kind of alcohol shaped thing. <laughs> there you go. So again, if you're just uh, joining me, I'm just sketching the poses right now. Not too worried about composition, a little bit. So this is the, the female character and she's really sad or s something's happened. And the male character clearly uh, has got a bottle in his hand and it's not posed to... Uh, in fact, I'm going to take the same, uh, kind of like this idea, take the same now you can see my figures are very loose. She's like, why? Why are you still drinking? Oh, my God. That's kind of cool. There's lots of emotion on this one. I like this one so far. Mmm, conflict at home. So buh, 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 buh. trying to think of some poses here. Oh, I got one. I got one. How about we'll put the female character closer to us so we relate to her. She has her hands over her face like she's crying, she's upset. And the man's like, oh, I don't know what to do. 
Uh, I don't know what to do. What did I do? Oh, oh, even better. The man's like, oh my god, <laughs> he's got a headache too. He's like, what? What did I do? Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm so confused. What do I do? Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, so that that's that's got potential. Let me sketch one more. I'm just gonna. I'm just playing a little bit and having fun. I like this one. I like kind of the female crying. This one's a bit more of like the, uh, they're having a verbal argument. Let me just, let me just try an obvious one. So let's see. One is, I just want to try the obvious one to see for myself. One is being aggressive and yelling and the other one's like withdrawing no 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 you know uh sh shielding she's shielding herself from from the the argument no why oh, why do you say that oh no oh ooh, that one's that one's got some emotion her pose is really powerful and so so is his let me do one quick variation of that I just want to see, remember, we want to sharpen our picture. Sharpening our picture means iterations, refining. What if his pose is really aggressive? This is almost conflict, like, hey! This is your fault, da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da. It is your fault. Yeah. Okay, it's got potential. What if we take the same one? Let's take this one. That one's a little too aggressive. What if I take the same one and flip it? Oh, no. Oh, oh, yes. And what if they're touching? Oh, they're not really touching. Right now, I haven't drawn them uh, physically touching. Oh, that is powerful. Wow. He's like reaching out to her like, honey, what's wrong? No, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. Oh, you, I'm so upset. <laughs> Okay, I, I, oh, this is a good ones. We got some good ones. We got some good ones, right? Just as, you know, sort of the first stage, just kind of brainstorming poses for our figures. They all feel strong. I don't know how, how you guys did or what, what to, um, what to family members, what to characters you chose. But for uh, a couple, not having, you know, having a bit of a tension, bit of an argument, argument perhaps. I like in these. I really like this one. This one, <laughs> this one, I can relate to. <laughs> I think it may, may be uh, some some of you, uh, you guys or, or girls at home, maybe you um, can relate to this moment. Let's let's take this moment here. This one is, is powerful. Okay, so I got my um, little figure sketch, and what I'm going to do now is refine. So I'm going to sharpen what I have. Remember, what's one of the lessons? from the great teachers, the great authors of this book. Don't be satisfied with one. <laughs> sharpen, sharpen, sharpen your composition. So I'm going to iterate. I'm going to try some real basic things like scale. OK, what if I change the scale? Does it have more impact? Now, I'm doing this in Photoshop, obviously, super easy. But if you're doing this in thumbnail and you draw them small, it's also very easy to play with. But if I put them in the corner, it's heavy. If I put them up top, how does that affect it? If I put them indoors or outdoors, so I'm already thinking about the background too, because if I make them small, reduce the size of the characters, that means the background may need to take up more space in the composition or may not. Just thinking here. How about changing the 
the camera angle a little bit. What if we make the female character, she's upset. We bring her closer. She's got her face, her hand over her hands over her face. She's clearly crying. She's clearly upset. Her hair is a bit, a bit messy. You tell she's crying, and the man's like, "No, what's what's wrong? Oh, I don't understand. Oh, okay. So I don't like this. <laughs> I think it's too close. I want to see their bodies more. Their bodies." I feel like if I can see the arch of her spine, it's much more impactful. Oh, what if I try this? What if I do this? Oh, 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 oh. What if we put it on a slight angle and then we put her here? I just, I just want to see. I just want to see what happens. This is, this is why. Uh, once, once you start practicing composition, you'll, you'll see it's kind of fun to do these iterations. Because once you understand how simple iterations can be, you'll see the unlimited possibilities you have, so many possibilities you have to play with. Oh, oh, what if I do this? Oh, no. You see how if I put them outside, that tells us totally different story, right? You, you can imply the story now because just because I drew the house and I drew this dramatic angle, you see how the angle creates tension? We, we learned that a few times in previous lessons, previous videos. Make sure to review this series if you want to learn more compositional lessons, of course. Now you see how that changes. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I like that a lot. Oh, watch this. Watch this. You ready? Oh, heavy cloud. Oh, 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 this is so cool. Oh, I like that. I like that. How much time we got? <laughs> I don't want to draw too much. I'm having a little bit of fun here. Yeah, co composition can become fun, especially when you get in a good rhythm. You know, the first one or two or three or ten, they usually will, will stink. <laughs> they won't be any good, really. Once you get to like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you start to um, you start to start to have fun with it, and you get in a rhythm. It's exactly like exercising. It's exactly like exercising. You know, when you're when you're playing a sport, obviously the warm up part of your sport. You know, you're not you're not you're not at your best. But as your body gets warmed up, you know, whatever skill or sport you play, your actions and your your motions get more and more stronger and more refined as you get warmed up and as you practice your sport or whatever. So it's the same thing with uh, drawing composition. It's just like a muscle. Like I always say, composition is exactly like a muscle and just like a muscle in the gym. You know, you know, you got, you got to put them, put them reps in. And the, the, usually the more reps you do, the stronger and stronger you get. And then you get, you get warmed up, right? As you, as you work out your muscle. So I, I like this. Uh, I, I don't want to take too long for this, but I like this. There's a lot of potential here. I'm going to do one more iteration, maybe clean it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do one more sharpening, one more refinement. I like the poses. What I'm going to do is refine the background a little bit. I'm going to make the house. Well, I made the ground less angle. It's a little too dramatic. It's a little too like action story. I don't really want that. I want a bit more of a subtle tension, more of like a slow burn, you know? And I uh, still want to put the house there. So now they're outside. Maybe put a layer. I'd like to put some horizontal elements. Because remember, horizontal is has a sort of a... Yeah. And you see how I want to make the house a bit asymmetrical too. It was too symmetrical before. Now it's going to make it a little bit asymmetrical. A little bit smaller and asymmetrical. So what happens now? She's she got pretty far away before he stopped her. She's really upset. <laughs> she almost left the 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 house. And then he's he stopped her. He's like, no, no, honey, what's wrong? Oh. And then the angle. 
asymmetric house, it sort of kind of mimics the tension in, in the family between them. And then a big, big old heavy gray cloud. In fact, I'm going to put the cloud there now. Just to remind, oh, that looks so cool. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Oh, look how heavy that cloud is. Oh, my goodness. And then I'm going to make her white, of course. Maybe put a light behind his head just to know that, okay, he's he's thinking he's he is important in this story, you know. He's important too. So we're going to make him stand out a little bit from the background. There's one light at home. So that one light at home means there's a little bit of hope left in their relationship, right? It's not completely finished. Can they resolve the conflict, the tension? Oh no. What do we do? Oh my gosh. Once I put some little shading on the cloud, you see how heavy it feels? Oh, I love it. This is so much fun. Anyway, so that's <laughs> that's my first little sketch, practicing some ideas. How'd you guys do? How did you do? Obviously, don't stop at, what did I stop at? Five. You know, we want to keep sharpening. I would do, you know, if this was a real assignment, for me, I would do way more than this. I would keep refining various values, refining shapes until I found one that um, really communicated what I wanted, uh, which was conflict and tension here between, uh, between you know, a man and a woman, a couple in their home. I think I think this is a great, great start. I feel a lot of emotion here. I literally can relate. That's why. That's why I think, and th like I like I mentioned. Probably many of you watching, comment below if you can relate to this story. Those of you who, um, you know, who have a husband, wife, boyfriend, or girlfriend, <laughs> I'm sure we can all, we've all been here. <laughs> we've all been here. All right, let's do one more exercise together. I'm going to do this similar to what we just did with the draw along in, in two parts. First with the sketch and then with some iterations. So our brief will be, this demo will be um, going home from school going home from school. The brief is, our assignment will be, sketch a composition of two characters that communicates the story of a young girl walking home from school with a companion. And this is um, a page from the book here, this, this exercise. This demo is inspired by this page from the book. Uh, rules and guidelines. Select the best poses to communicate the story, of course. And here we're going to get more into the background. So design background elements to reinforce the story. So we're going to have to draw more, a little bit more background. And um, uh, part two of the demo of this exercise will be to do iterations. So part one will be to do sort of quick, quick thumbnails, quick sketches, and then Part five, to refine, refine, refine with at least five iterations. And of course, simple values as usual. Just black and white thumbnail sketching. And here's the page from the book. And you can see this beautifully illustrates two characters walking home with a little girl, beautiful background. And in the book, they break down how the artist chose these elements consciously, including the poses. So let's do that now. Let's practice this now. Let's practice choosing good poses, uh, designing good poses, and designing a background that emphasizes our story. Okay, going home from school is our story. So I'm just going to sketch some figures. Remember, our assignment is to illustrate two characters that communicates going home from school. In the example that we saw, what it looked like to be a father-daughter which is what, what I'm going to do here. Now, you don't have to sketch father-daughter. You can sketch maybe um, the mother and the daughter. You can sketch a young girl and maybe her older sibling, older brother, older sister, or maybe a young girl and her classmate, a friend, a neighborhood friend. Or it could be a young girl and the family pet and, and her dog or something like that. As long as it's a companion. you know. So if you like drawing animals, that would be a fun one to play with, a young girl going home from school with her pet. Now, and of course, the emotion is important too. 
you know, is, is it generally positive emotions in our story? Is it generally negative emotions in our story? Is our story going to be maybe somewhere in between, a bit somber, a bit moody? Is our story going to be uh, scary? Is it going to be some kind of threats involved? So all of that stuff we have to figure out now. And I'm going to leave that open to you. If you're following along at home, if you're doing this exercise, remember to think about those things. I want to write those things down here. So questions to ask. Is it overall positive or negative overall? Positive or negative? POS means positive. Positive or negative? What is their relationship like? Relationship between the character, meaning are they close? Do they like each other? Is there tension between them like we kind of sketched before? Is it the father and a child, a parent and child? Is it two friends? Is it uh, two siblings? Do the siblings get along? Are they constantly fighting? So those are some questions, big important question to ask relation to the characters. What about their environment? Is their environment, background, environment, is their environment positive or negative? Is their environment supportive? Is their environment threatening? Is their environment dangerous? Is their environment somewhat neutral? Is it, am I gonna draw them you know, on an empty street or an empty sidewalk? Should they be in a big city with a crowded city? Should they be in nature? Maybe they're walking home in nature. Actually, I like that idea. I like that. So think about the environment and how it affects, how it affects the story. Let's just sketch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch father and daughter. So that's the relationship. They like each other. They, they love each other. They have a good relationship, good father and daughter relationship. The mood is going to be positive. So she's coming home from a happy day at school. She's happy. She had fun at school and she's happy to go home. She's happy to see her dad. She's happy to tell her dad, oh, dad, all the wonderful things that happened at school. So that's, that's, that's what I have. And their environment will be a calming nature environment. So I'm, at least that's my first thought. So let's, let's do that. So I'm going to sketch that father, daughter generally positive emotions okay mm, bu, 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 bu. so the little girl so what first i'm going to sketch poses of a little girl a little girl like happy to be home from happy to be walking home from school how about that from a good day so there's a there's a good pose arms out she's got a little backpack silhouette there and uh her, she's her dad is here her dad's like, wow, I'm going to make the dad kind of like her, kind of. He's like, wow, honey, tell me all about it. And I'm putting them on a hill. I don't know why. <laughs> I just like to draw angles. I like her pose and her shapes, his, the dad's shapes, not so much. So let's keep drawing. Let's, 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 what if we go facing the opposite direction? And right away, there's something I, I just noticed here. It's also mentioned in the book. So notice her legs. Notice her legs are crossed. And you see the reed is a little bit not as clear as if her legs, she's in a walking pose, but her legs aren't crossed. You see now it's clear. Oh, she's, she's clearly walking. Her legs are more separated. You see that? I'm 
we'll put the school building back here just just to see what it would look like. Okay. How about girl walking? What if they're like more making more contact? How does that affect the story? Maybe the dad has more of her his arm around his daughter, and um, they're leaning into each other, so that reinforces their relationship, right? That's when you draw figures like this. When you see two people leaning in, you know that most likely they like each other. <laughs> so that's a body language communication there. So we can do that in our drawing, of course. And they're even walking in step, both uh, they're matching their, each other's walking rhythm. And we'll put the little schoolhouse here. And we'll put, um, we'll put a nice clear kind of nature-y day, big cloud perhaps. What to do with the dad's hands, it's always a tricky question. Tricky thing to do, the, the offhand in this case. Should, be, should, should he be swinging his arms? Should he be holding something of hers? Should he be, um, what, what would add to the story? Hand on the side, no. Hand towards her more? That could be, that could be really nice. That shows that they're really, really close. She's really happy to see him. He's really happy to see his daughter come home. He's happy to walk her home. It's a quite like a joyful, fun, playful, very positive kind of things. It's a bit sugary. It's a bit too, when I say sugary, I mean, it's a bit too, too happy, <laughs> too positive. We need a little bit of spice in there. How do we do that? Mm. How about, I just want to try something real quick. What if they're walking home? She's sitting on his shoulders. He's like, she's like, dad, you won't believe what happened. And, and he's like, oh, honey, tell me all about it. And he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, and he's, he's has in my drawing, I'm going to have one leg up to show that, you know, he's clearly uh, strong enough to, easily balance her. Uh, I'm going to put a little winding road to show that they traveled a little bit in their journey so far and that the uh, where they came from is a little bit up the hill. Now they're going to climb a hill together. Oh, so that's kind of nice. And I'm going to put the clouds at an angle to show uh, a bit of drama. And then I'm going to put, I kind of like that, actually. It's very, very simple and fun and playful. I'm going to put, um, oh, I know, to add a little bit of tension, I'm going to put the sun setting. That means, oh, she, she, she stayed late for some reason. Uh-oh, she was late or the dad was late in picking her up or maybe she got in trouble. Maybe she didn't do her schoolwork, so the teacher... Asked her to stay late. Okay, I like this one. So um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to move forward. But again, please don't stop at four if you're doing this at home. Pause the video now and sketch, you know, I would say um, sketch a dozen or so at least. That's Remember, that's what Loomis was saying, a dozen or two. He was saying 12 or 24 minimum. So that I, I think that's great advice. So, okay. And anyway, I'm going to move forward with this one here. So remember, part of our assignment was to make sure that the background communicates the story. So right now, our story is a really fun interaction, a fun walk home. It's a father and daughter having fun walking home from school, and they like each other. They have a good relationship. They're happy to see each other. She's happy to tell him all about her day, 
and he's happy to walk home with his daughter that he cares about. And he wants to make sure that she gets home before the sun setting. And why is she? Uh, <laughs> why is she uh, late? I'm gonna play with. Uh, placement a little bit. I think a little higher is nicer. Yeah, I'm going to play with that. But now I'm going to refine the background a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I like the pose. I kind of like the placement. Maybe place them. Oh, that's nice. Remember in the center, remember how important it is to place the, the figure in relationship to the border or, or the sides of the frame? Right in the middle, not much movement. On the closer to the side, more movement. Closer to the left, less movement. So here, more time has passed. I like that. And I think I'm going to really reinforce the sun here somehow. <laughs> I don't want to highlight his foot, but that is kind of cool. I want to show that the sun is setting. And I want to show that, that they do have to walk <laughs> quite a bit. How about that? How about that? Quite a bit. And then the school. Or maybe we could put the setting sun behind the school. I like that idea. Let's try it. So now I got my poses. I got my general placement. Now I'm refining background. Remember, that's part of our assignment. Make sure our background supports our idea. And make sure try to draw try to draw a little tiny school. I think I think that that works right there. A little tiny school building. Make it a little bit small and insignificant. And we'll put the setting sun right there. Oh, that's it. That's the ticket right there. And then the sky. Oh, that's the ticket right there. That is the ticket. I'm gonna put the setting sun behind the school. So we can can uh, create a bit of a uh, hot spot there, a bit of a compositional tension there so that's creating tension right a little bit of tension oh i'm loving it i'm loving it i think this is working and then you see what i just did here with the sketching this tells me i need to iterate on my technique right if i add hatching and line that that creates a much different composition than if i were to just make it a flat right a flat piece of ground or grass or whatever all right so let's play with that so i'm going to do um some i'm happy with the background for now obviously for the sake of time i'm going to move forward but what i would do just like norman rockwell said loomis said is keep sketching i wouldn't stop at one, I'm here, and again, I'm only stopping because I don't want this video to be three hours long, so obviously I gotta move forward. <laughs> but you're watching at home, please, 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 please keep sketching, pause the video, and keep sketching until you have at least 12, how about that? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I would keep refining the background, you know, play with the road shape, play with the, um, play with the, the shape of the schoolhouse, play with the clouds, play with the angle of the ground. Lots of things to play with here, to iterate, to test out, to iterate, to refine. I think um, the original long windy road was fine. Maybe we'll put a little bit of like a little store or something along the way. Maybe, oh, maybe, oh, that's, that's add some story element. Maybe I'll put a little store. It adds story element and scale. So here's a little store on the road. The schoolhouse is in the back. And maybe she, um, they stopped to get some candy or some snacks or something. She's really happy. Let's play with the tone. So like I said, I'm moving forward with tone now, but I'm not completely happy with the background. The background does need a lot more iteration. But again, I'm going to stop for the sake of time here.
Wow, this is a long day for her. <laughs> She's coming home late. I wonder why, what happened? I'm gonna make her backpack a little bit dark. I'm gonna make her pretty bright. Maybe I like a white shirt. I'm gonna give the dad a white stripe so that they relate. I don't want him to be too dark. Make the ground pretty dark for now. And um, like I said, I also need to play with the, the technique, right? Should I use hatching? Right now I'm using an airbrush. Should I use hatching instead to create more texture and movement perhaps? I definitely need to test that out. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, I'm gonna do one last iteration. I wanted to test out hatching. Does it help? Does it I think right right now I feel like it distracts from the story. It, it brings up too much attention to the ground, really. You see that? You see that? And I'm I'm glad I did this. So this is this is why why sharpening your picture, like Norman Rockwell says, and the authors say, is so important. Why you have to like never be satisfied with the composition you have until you absolutely know you've exhausted or you've tried lots and lots and lots and lots of different combinations to see what works and what doesn't. And right now I tried a slight different iteration by adding hatching, you see, on the left, right? Essentially a pretty nice tonal composition, but now I'm doing a tonal composition and a little bit of texture, a little bit of movement, a little bit of technique difference. And you can see, in my opinion, it does not help the story. So it has to go, <laughs> but I would not have known that, right? Now I'm satisfied to know like, okay, maybe smoother smoother marks are better than hatching marks. It's a good stopping point here. Obviously keep going, keep sketching, pause the video and keep refining a minimum of five iterations for this assignment. And definitely um, review the lessons in this book or you know, if you can try to get a copy of this book, Pinterest has a lot of pages. If you go to pinterest.com and you search famous artist school, there's a lot of scanned pages available on Pinterest. So that's a great place to see some pages from this wonderful, wonderful volumes written by, you know, some of the most important artists in history. All of these lessons, you know, as you can see, you may notice a lot of these lessons are being echoed or being repeated or being restated. So this is no exception. This book, like I said, was uh, created by some of the top artists in the world at the time and you know arguably in history and they wanted to teach people they wanted to share their information with the world and help artists become professional illustrators really that's really the core of this book and i think just this section alone on composition can have a tremendous impact if you really take the lessons to heart and you practice them and start to apply them in your work. You'll see just how much better your pictures will be if you just simply apply a few of the simple lessons that, that are in the book and some that we reviewed here in this video as well.